Hey everyone and welcome uh, to Arai, which is a, a very new little side project and it is the name for Arctic Research and Entertainment Institute. So um, yeah, well the DLC, the new brand new DLC um, Arctic Pack uh, was released a few days ago and actually yesterday, so it's Wednesday. Um, and I streamed the whole night on Twitch uh, building this over here and the, the good thing about this is I I, I really think this is the best way to tackle this whole thing, mainly because I really thought, okay, it's not fitting into um, Yosemite Valley in a way, because Yosemite Valley is, is going a route um, where everything I, I, I had in my mind felt like very, it, it just felt forced, you know, and I wanted to do something that feels natural and, um, you know, there there is this little problem of, of a polar bear having a little bit of a crazy need of, um, well, uh, space, I guess. And I wanted to create something where the polar bear can live naturally and yet is kind of integrated into something organic. And this is why we are creating this research station over here, which is somewhat like um, a polar station, you can imagine, um, where you would fly to or, or you know, basically fly or get by boat. And then um, this is where the researchers um, do their work and, and kind of have a look into how the animals behave and how the nature is changing and climate and stuff like that. I, I think for, for the... Um, for the idea of Planet Zoo, this is something very cool and it kind of transports the conservation idea better than if I would do any kind of, you know, weird uh, weird zoo and, and force a gigantic uh, habitat into it, which I don't want. So this is, this is the idea and in today's first episode, tomorrow will already be the second, um, we are going to... We're going to build basically the foundation for it and tomorrow will already be the main institute. I don't know how quick I'll be um, with this build, so bear in mind that it might potentially be already over next week so and then be released because it should be just a very small side project to Yosemite and the other stuff and I just wanted to do something uh, really quick here that fits but still looks good and has a purpose and I have to say it, um, I'm quite happy with it and yeah, you have to go now with me through the terraforming. I really thought a long time about what I will be releasing as a first episode and I at the end decided for uh, the very beginning instead of going for the research institute uh, at the beginning and then show you the process of making the map later. Um, but in today's episode we will have the reindeers at the end so stick with me if you are also here for the animals, uh, there will be some reindeers. Um, it's uh, the idea about the reindeers is, is mostly that I want them to um, function as actually as, as usable assets for our sled. So we are going to build a sled in one of the future episodes as well. Uh, all the assets will be provided to you guys so you can use them, the sled, the buildings and stuff like that. So I'm I'm just I'm just trying to build a very quick little series here that you know pa you know pays tribute to the Arctic Pack. And one of the cool things about the Arctic Pack is what I was figuring out here in the time lapse. We now have a one meter grid, which is super awesome because that means um, on the grid we can build a lot more intricate, a lot more interesting and make the whole thing look a lot nicer by default and, and not having the need to stick to the two uh, like four meter grid which which makes the buildings all very blocky and, and big and you know um, this is why I'm, I'm fairly happy with the change. It also serves as a little bit of an easy like you could get an one meter grid beforehand with a little trick uh, but it, it's cool that it is in as an option now it's kind of the same as with planet coaster i remember we had the um, four meter grid at the beginning and then with some roof pieces in planet coaster you could just uh, go back to a two meter grid and then they added the two meter grid by default and then we found out how to get a one meter grid and they added that by default and yeah, at the end there was even a, a, a kind of trick how to get to a 0 0.5 meter grid, so it's, yeah, it's kind of that story, but it's very cool that we have the grid um, the way we have it, and uh, this building over here will serve as the main spawn point, because I didn't want to have this zoo starting in um, at the border of the zoo, because um, or border of the park, uh, because the idea of a research station is that it's in the middle of nowhere, and I wanted to make it look like that. So what I'm doing over here is I'm building a helipad, uh, where, you know, potentially the helicopter would be landing. And uh, here's also me. I was kind of confused if they changed the texture on the plaster packs, but at the end of the day, it was only um, because they basically had a nice little frost uh, overlay which is pretty cool because it shows how cold it is in that area and uh, I yeah I was a bit confused but in the end uh, it's not that bad because it's only the frost I just enabled rain pretty quickly and just made it cold again and so uh, this little overlay was gone because I was just confused how it looks uh, on the helipad here so I I decided to change it 
to make sure that it looks clean, uh, as clean as I can get it. And you will see I'm not building in snow. Uh, at the end, this will all be covered in snow, obviously. This is the Arctic, so uh, I, I definitely want to have it in snow. But for those of you who have already built in that map, they will know that this is uh, fairly... Yeah, well, fairly complicated, to be honest, uh, to create in snow because um, it, the snow just is very white, as snow is usually, and it creates that weird looking, uh, uh, you know, everything looks like bleached out in a way, which is great because that's how it is, but it's very hard to build then indeed. It kind of uh, blocks the view to any detail you have in the ground. It, it makes it hard to understand what kind of elevation you have. It, you know, all these kind of things. Um, and also, you don't know where the path go and you know, all this kind of stuff is really is really not that easy to gasp. So I decided to quickly enable rain at the beginning to make sure that we have a cleaned off area to, to make sure that I know where anything is. And yeah, I also did some terrain painting um, in case there is no snow and also in case we have some heaters going on because I wanted to put some heaters maybe uh, inside some areas because usually you wouldn't have that much snow there. For example, on on this helipad over here because when you have snow enabled and we'll do this at the end with some cinematics for you guys then uh, you will te technically see that this is all bleached out again and just white-ish as it as it is in snow and I I felt like I need to do something about it but yeah so as you can see um, this is just a fairly easy build over here I just wanted to make sure that this gets a purpose that we don't have a spawner that is without a purpose so this whole build over here mainly only focuses on on making the entrance this is basically the entrance of our little side project the array I like the name name by the way um, let me know in the comments if you like it too but I found it a very interesting name and we will play around with the name as well um, in later stages of it so we will have the the array naming as well integrated into the builds and yeah as you can see I was fencing this area off a little bit to prevent some animals uh, from walking in I yeah well I tried some different pieces various pieces here and there I also figured like if we will have some foliage some ground shrubbery it will be around this area mainly because it's a bit warmer and a bit more likely that stuff would grow here and uh, yeah put some stones down for the context of things and yeah I will obviously make this whole thing look nicer later on as well so it's all integrated into the polar station we will have some out posts maybe like a like an antenna a big antenna you know and then um, the antenna and everything like that will all be in the polar bear habitat so that the polar bear is roaming around free um, kind of around this station this is the idea so the whole polar bear habitat shall be hugging this area so this kind of creates a nice little aspect and I, I found some little uh, cheeky ways to make some natural borders that don't seem to be natural borders just playing around a little bit with the hit boxes of stones and trees to make sure that it it almost looks like as if the bear could just go in there but it simply doesn't so that's the idea yeah I also like in the meantime I tested some of the new path things and stuff the, the new icing stuff like the um, how's it called? The, the, like the ice pieces and, uh, themselves and stuff, they look absolutely fantastic in terms of their texture. It's very trippy. There is this kind of uh, interesting parallax effect going on, but unfortunately they're not really usable because they're too blue, at least for me. I don't know, maybe other people have other ideas, but for me they are very much way too blue. Like they're super blue. They're like nearly unnaturally blue. Um, and I yeah, I just stepped away from from using them because I felt like it's not suitable. Yeah, as you can see over here I am building um, a little shipping container because that's what you would have here as well like you 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 know as a, It's a research station and it all has to be a bit more functioning uh, or Functional and, and rather than just very nice looking so I'm also putting down uh, kind of a little uh, yeah, shipping container. I'll provide this as a blueprint as well for you guys. And the cool bit about this is if you have enabled the aging of fences, you get a wonderful, nice uh, broken down appeal later on with the corrugated uh, metal. It looks fantastic because it, you know, it doesn't matter because there's no animal that can break in or break out, but it looks cool because it's weathered. And I, uh, I just love the kind of fact that it is. And yeah, I was struggling a lot to put it down because of the terrain elevation, but at the end, um, it's also so simple to just recolor this asset, you know, then we have like a bluish one and here we go This is just another one putting next to it. So it gives the whole thing a bit of context I moved the helipad a bit because I felt it's not natural enough uh, This car will hopefully be tweaked later on as well I, I just felt the car is not suitable in the stage it is, that it is right now, but yeah now um uh, all good things um, come to an end uh, over here with the entrance now finally halfway into this episode we are finally 
getting into the reindeer habitat and I have to say I'm very happy with how it turned out in the end. I didn't expect it to be that way because my initial idea about the reindeer habitat was to provide them an area where they could be very close to the station because again uh, we would be using them for our sleds um, and our slates I should say um, that they can pull and, and move us around. I'm also looking into making one with the arctic wolves. Um, I mean y yes usually it doesn't go um, we would have huskies for it uh, but kind of the idea to have like an arctic wolf habitat in here is also um, still part of my my initial thoughts here and I don't know how much time I will have today uh, to do this stuff but I really would love to go on playing a little bit and, and just uh, finishing off some of the things and, and just making this whole project more or less done so I can jump back into Yosemite and follow the normal order there but you can expect to have some more videos in the next coming days uh, because I just went full throttle on, on this a DLC here with all the new pieces. I didn't make an overview video because I, first of all, I was way later at home, like very late. And I also found out that I didn't really, like I, I okay, it's, it was mainly a little bit of an issue because I felt that uh, there is not too much to talk about. It's um, some things I do agree with, some things I don't, but there was a lot of discussion going on and I didn't want to trap into, um, well, I didn't want to, step into the trap of, of talking about stuff that I'm not really sure what I'm thinking about right now so I I needed some hours of gameplay uh, before I can really say something about this pack and I I must say that you know for the most part I really like the pieces that are in I really do not like that they're all again like basically from over 200 and whatever pieces they are not even a quarter of them are recolorable and these ones that are flexi color these pieces are mainly um, the Christmas present and uh, the um, the lights and so if you do take them away from the uh, equation then you will figure out that from the building pieces it's not even 10% of them are flexi color which is somewhat a little bit of a bummer because yes the pieces are insanely well designed and they they have a wonderful texture they are kind of versatile in the way you can use them they have different shapes and sizes all fine all great but the thing is I'm fearing that the the buildings and stuff will get too common and too too much similar in the end because no one can really change the color of them the shading whatever so it's, it's not possible to do that because it, it almost goes against the same rule that the more you use those pieces, the more you will find a common ground of where the pieces do work the best. And you can always try something else and something different. But it's at the end of the day, um, it would be just nice to have at least the same pieces with a recolor option. I do get this. I, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the fact that they um, change their mind a little bit and they provide us with pieces that are mainly um, having a wonderful intricate and super nice texture and then they give us the same piece with a slightly less detailed texture but this one is flexi color and i would have loved to see that with the dlc as well i would have loved to see that they give us like the the whole set you know in in this brownish tint with the wonderful uh wooden texture which is which is gorgeous and then give us some of the pieces at least um you know in with a bit more whatever texture i don't really care how much how good or whatever it is but just give me the shapes and the fact it would with a little bit of flexical i would have loved to see that to be honest i'm i still think um the dlc is great because of the animals the, the reindeers for example the model oh my gosh it is so freaking good it's the fur shader and everything the texture it's the movements it's it's absolutely insane i would say it's the star of the show here to be honest like yes i saw the polar bears too but we have a bunch of bears in the game and and to see a bear is not that exciting anymore but the the reindeer is like um oh my god they look fantastic like super fantastic uh the the babies look gorgeous they they the movement they they i think even in the cold when they when they breathe you can see that little bit of mist in more like the little bit of a, a little a smoke effect going in front of the snouts and like smoke is like a mist but well you know what i mean um they, they the sounds are well i don't need to talk about sounds with frontier though but uh front sounds are again fantastic so there's a whole bunch of stuff that is really amazing about this uh dlc and yeah i just would have loved they would have gone the extra meter because again also the icicles you've seen here a second ago um they are nice in terms of the design, finally they're a bit smaller than in Planko, but they are still not recallable and they're very bluish. So the, the blue on them is nearly unnaturally blue. I've, I've never seen icicles that blue, to be honest. So 
these are the kind of little things that I would have seen uh, change for the DLC. Uh, or maybe, you know, if it's not for that one, maybe for a future DLC that we get this ever so slightly more um, versatility with, with the pieces. That would be awesome because the pieces themselves, the, the amount of pieces, the design of the pieces, the design of the animals is all perfect and gorgeous. But this little extra meter was bit missing for me but it's just my personal preference opinion and uh you guys are also you know um I, I still want that you guys believe i'm giving you i'm despite everything else and so on i I'm, I'm giving you my honest opinion on that and i love the game i i love everything about it i love well not everything to be fair but i love most of the stuff about this game and i feel like it is a super good game and my my biggest complaint basically is that I see so much more potential and I would love to see this potential being used um, and it makes me kind of uh, sad to see that some of the potential is just not leveraged and I, I really want to see them using it in the future and that's why I'm I'm also trying to get in with some criticism and my own opinion and you guys also are watching my stuff as well to make sure that uh, you get my honest opinion on that you know I could also be here and like hey yeah it's all fantastic it's all great but it's not so this is also why I stepped away from making an overview video yesterday. I thought it's a good point to integrate that in this episode because, you know, the fact that I streamed this game yesterday five and a half -ish hours shows that I'm still a very big fan of it and I'm enjoying it uh, crazily. And I, yeah, again, I can still very much recommend everything about it to, to play it and stuff. But there's just so much potential and, I mean, isn't it great to say that there is potential? It would be way worse as I, if I would be sitting here and saying like, ah, you know, it's nice, but I don't see it any, any better being any better in the future. You know, that's not true. I see it. I see it being absolutely fantastic in the future if there are some things uh, just tackled a little bit differently, though. But hey, that's that's my that's my little um, thoughts about this uh, DLC so far and the free update. I'm I'm a big fan of having four more animals. I'm a big fan of having the Arctic here. The Aurora Borealis is freaking insane. I'm gonna put this at the end of this episode. It's gonna be blowing you away also there will be some hints of the next episode i'm i'm not going to cut out anything of the other stuff i built already so if you're excited for the next episode and see the building process you you already see what's going on uh i think it's a fair little uh spoiler alert here uh but yeah if you guys if you guys enjoy the stuff i do you are even more hopefully excited to tune in for tomorrow's episode and uh yeah i can i cannot wait to see that it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting to see what you guys think of it now yeah we do the normal terrain painting and, and make this whole habitat look a bit more natural and it's only again it's only for the for the time where there is no snow and uh, I yeah, again I was thinking of maybe putting down some heaters here and there to make the station pop out a little bit more because there is no snow uh, but we will see make the rest arctic looking and then this area without snow but you will see so we are nearly at the end of this episode. I'm gonna stop my commentary here already because you will get then uh, the cinematics at the end. And today there will be also Yosemite Valley with a big update on uh, an area. Uh, so it's also very exciting. Make sure to check out. It, it'll be released in an hour time. So uh, enjoy today's content. Uh, leave me the, the feedback down below. And today's question is, what is your favorite Arctic animal? Not from the pack, but in general. I really would love to hear what you guys think about the Arctic animals in general and which one is missing for you, which one would you have loved to see and or would you love to see in the future and stuff like that. So, have a good day. See you next day and see you next episode, I should say. Until then, have a great time and bye, guys. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video, I really do appreciate that. As always, uh, make sure to check out also my social media channels, you can find me everywhere under at RudyRedCamel. Also, big thanks to the crew, uh, you can see it on the left hand side right now. And as always, if you want to see more, you click that card on the top right. And if you want to stick around because you like the stuff you've just saw, you just saw, whatever, you know what I mean, just uh, click the sub button which is to the bottom right of the screen right now. But everything else I can say is have a great time and see you next time. Bye guys.